In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to use landscape splines with landscape layers. If you've never used splines before, they allow you to create linear features on your landscape, such as roads, railroads, pathways. You can also have static meshes be placed along a specific spline, such as posts, ramps, fences, and these splines have been around UE4 for some time now. But with the addition of landscape layers in 4.24, using landscape splines became a lot easier. You can now add these splines to your landscape and modify them non-destructively. So first, make sure you've gone through the two previous tutorials I released that cover how to use landscape layers for sculpting and for painting textures. These two are very important to watch first before jumping in into watching this tutorial. And in this video, I'm gonna entirely focus on using splines with landscape layers. And I'm not going to cover too much of actually using the splines themselves, but more about how to use the splines with the new landscape layers. I have an entire video that's dedicated for how to use splines on your landscape and all the options that you need to know in UE4 Landscapes Essentials course. So if you want to know more about how to get started, how to create landscapes, how to create landscape materials and paint textures, take a look at that course. So let's begin. First, to use splines with landscape layers, make sure you have enabled edit layers on your landscape. And we covered how to do that in the first landscape layer sculpting video. And here I already have a bunch of layers created from the previous two videos. And then to add splines to your landscape, go to landscape mode, manage, then use the drop down menu and choose edit splines. I keep use auto rotate control points enabled this helps to orient your control points and auto-rotate them as you place them. And then inside the perspective viewport, if you press and hold control and left click, this will insert the first spine control point. And then if you continue to hold on control and left click, this will place additional control points and begin to create your spine. Now the landscape height map will not change at the moment. And all you have is just a spline created. So you can see here, nothing has been modified yet. Under the Manage and Edit Splines tool, you do have two options. Deform landscape to splines for all splines or only selected splines. And do not use this Deform landscape to splines option. This only applies if you are not using landscape layers. So in the previous versions of UE4, this is what you had to use to begin modifying the landscape height map to conform to the splines. But now with landscape layers, you do not want to use this. Now, if you do, what will happen is it will modify the height map to the spline for the selected layer. So basically it will hard sculpt and destroy what you've created on a specific layer. So here I had base selected and then modified the landscape to the spline for the base layer. I'm gonna go ahead and undo. And if I had another layer selected, and modified all splines, the changes would be applied to that selected layer. But again, this sculpts the data based on the spline into that selected layer. So this is not something you want to do. And instead, UE4 allows you to dedicate an entire layer specifically for splines. So I already have the splines created and then it doesn't matter if you're under Manage, Sculpt or Paint tab, you can be underneath either one scroll down to landscape layers and you have two options for reserving a specific layer for splines to an existing landscape layer by right clicking on it and choosing reserve for splines but a better way is to create a new layer so you know it's empty and reserve that layer for splines so i'm going to right click choose create i'm going to rename it to splines and you can name this anything you want the name won't affect anything and then I'm going to right click on the layer and choose reserve for splines. A menu will pop up and I'm just going to click yes. As soon as I do that, any already created spline inside the level will be automatically placed into this reserve for spline layer. And the landscape height map will be automatically modified to conform to the spline. Now the spline information that's modifying our landscape is contained within one single layer. And if I turn off and on the visibility, 
you can see that everything is within one specific spline layer. If I create any other additional splines, whether I have a spline layer selected or not, it doesn't matter. All newly created splines will be automatically placed into the reserve for splines layer. And remember, to create splines, you have to be inside the landscape mode, manage, and have the added splines tool enabled. And as soon as you begin to add the splines, the height map will be modified. And here you can see I had the noise layer selected and the newly created spline doesn't affect that layer. And it was actually automatically placed into your reserve for spline layer. And one very important thing to know that you are allowed to have only one reserve for spline layer. So as an example, if I decide to create a new layer, right now it's empty, and I'm going to right-click on it and choose Reserve for Splines. Click Yes. All existing splines I have will be placed into that layer, and the previous layer will become a normal layer, and all the splines from it have been moved into the new layer. So only one Reserve for Spline layer is allowed. I'm going to go ahead and delete this layer and then rename this current layer back to splines. A reserved for splines layer does not have any alpha controls. It will be grayed out. So if I switch over to sculpt or to paint, this reserved for spline layer cannot have the alpha adjusted. So within the layer itself, you don't have much control over what you do to the spline, but you can adjust and edit control points and segments for each spline. And to edit control points or segments, you have to be inside Manage and have Edit Splines tool enabled. And once you do, you will see these control points and segments appear on your landscape. So it's important to understand the difference between control points and segments. A control point is this element right here, and it is a control element for the segment. And a segment is a section between two control points. And control points and segments will have different options for each. You can left click on the control point to select it. And then you can begin to move the control point up or down, left or right, and reposition it to adjust the spline. And because we're using landscape layers, everything is being adjusted in real time. And if you can't move the control point, just press the space bar to cycle between move, scale, and rotate. So you can move the control points by using the move tool, or press the space bar to cycle to rotate, and you can rotate each control point and adjust the curve of that control point. And because we have more than one spline inside the level, you can do the same thing to any additional splines you have. Now, control points and segments have a different set of options to adjust to determine how the spline looks. To adjust these control points or segments and see the options, again make sure you are inside Edit Splines mode so you see these control points and the green segments. And then you have to switch over to the Details tab. And in here if I select a control point, a different set of options will pop up. And a different set of options will pop up if I select a segment. I'm going to go ahead and open up a new Details panel so you can see better. And I'm going to go ahead and select a control point. And there are two very useful options at the top. You can select all connected control points or all connected segments. So most of the time you will want to adjust all control points or all segments at the same time, rather than doing them individually. So I'm going to go ahead and select all connected control points. And for control points you can set the width of the spline. So if we want to make it more narrow, I'm going to change the width to 500. I'm going to lower the side fall off so it's a bit steeper on each side. Then you can adjust the left and the right side fall off factor individually. And the end fall off, which is the very last control point and how much of the fall off it has before it begins to taper off and blend with the landscape. And of course, because we had all control points selected, we were adjusting everything for the entire spline. If 
but you can adjust it individually for one control point by selecting a control point and then adjusting the properties. And it will only change it for that one selected control point. And if you have more than one spline inside the level, you can repeat the steps for those splines. So you can have different properties for different splines and per individual control points. And the beauty of this is everything will be updated automatically in real time so you can see the results because we are using landscape layers. If you want to see the results on your landscape better, hit the G key to go into game mode and you will temporarily hide the splines from view. So in addition to control points, you can adjust different settings, different options for segments. So I'm going to select either a control point or a segment on the spline. And then I'm going to go ahead and select all connected segments. This way I can adjust all segments at the same time, or I can adjust them individually by left clicking on the segment. I'm going to go ahead and adjust them all at the same time. For segments, you have just a few options. You can assign a texture to be applied automatically underneath the spline right onto the landscape. You can raise or lower the terrain or both. And then you can assign static meshes to be placed along the spline. And all of this is done underneath segments. So first is the layer name. This allows you to assign a specific texture layer from your landscape material to be applied along the spline. Now a very important part about this, this has to be set underneath segments because you will have the same option when you select control points right down here. And if you do this for control points, it will not work. So this texture layer name has to be done underneath selected segments. And this layer name has to come from your landscape material, from the layers you created within the layer blend node. So I'm going to select the landscape, go to details panel, and find our material inside the content browser so I can open it, and go inside the material editor. And then here, within the layer blend node, we already have four layers. And these are the names that you would enter underneath layer name. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to go back into our level, then back to landscape mode, manage, and make sure you are under edit splines tool. Then I'm going to select all control points and show you what happens when you do it underneath the control points rather than segments. And I'm going to enter the layer name into this property. And in this case, I'm going to enter dirt. And as you can see, it doesn't work. So I'm going to reset it back to default. And now I'm going to select all segments and then under layer name, enter the name of the layer that I want to texture the spline with, and I'm going to enter dirt. And as soon as you press enter, this spline will be textured using that dirt layer. But there is a slight problem with how this dirt layer, this dirt texture looks. And this has to do with the blend type and the layer info we have set for the dirt texture layer. Because of the spline information is contained within a separate layer, the layer info needs to be set to a non-weight blended layer. So you can display that texture correctly on a separate landscape layer. And the blend type for that texture layer needs to be set to LB Alpha Blend. And I covered this in more detail in a second video for the landscape layers painting textures. So make sure you watch that because I show you how to fix that in more detail. So I'm not going to do anything to the dirt layer and instead I'm going to use an existing layer we have that is already set to the blend type LB Alpha Blend and the layer info is already set to no weight blended layer. And in this case I'm going to use the cobblestone. So let's go back to landscape mode, manage, edit splines, and I'm going to select all segments and then reset the layer name back to default. So we remove that dirt. And then I'm going to enter a different layer name, the one that I know will work. In this case, I'm going to enter cobblestone. And as soon as I do that, it will texture the landscape underneath the spine and it will appear correctly. Then I'm going to select all control points to bring up the menu. And there are two options here that are specific 
to the texture or the layer name we entered and its left and right side layer falloff factor. This controls the texture blend offset on each side of the spline. And then if I go back and select all connected segments, there are two other options that are very useful. To raise the terrain, to lower the terrain, or both. So if you disable raise terrain, it will only modify the height map to lower the terrain. And if you disable lower terrain, it will only modify the height map to raise your terrain. Or you can do both, raise and lower, which is the default. And if you have any additional splines inside your level, you can texture them with a different texture using a different layer name. So you can have a lot of variety for each landscape spline inside your level. And remember, all the spline information is contained within one single layer. So it doesn't matter how many splines you have, all of them are within the reserved for splines layer. And that you have to be inside manage edit splines tool if you want to modify and reposition any control points or modify and change any segments and everything will be updated in real time inside the viewport. And this is the power of using landscape layers and splines within them. The reserve for splines layer is available in all three tabs, manage, sculpt, or paint. And if you right click on that layer, you will have some additional options. One of them is clear. You can clear the information within the spline layer for all painted texture information or for a specific texture for all of the sculpted information or both sculpt and painted textures. So I'm going to go ahead and clear just the rock painted texture. And then if you decide to delete that layer, everything that you have within that layer will be removed. The painted textures and the sculpted information. But the splines themselves will still be available for you to edit. So you can modify them, change them. And then when you're ready, you right click on any layer and then choose reserve for splines. Then automatically the landscape will conform and modify itself to fit the splines. And all the information that we set for each spline, such as the layer name, the width, the falloffs, are still contained within that spline and they will be automatically applied as soon as you reserve a layer specifically for splines. And last, within the layer stack, the order of reserve for splines layer is very important. If you left click and drag the reserve for splines layer, the effect of it will be different depending where in order that layer is within the rest of the landscape layers. So depending where you position it, you will have a different result of how that spline and that layer is affecting the landscape. So be aware of that. To use all these new landscape layers, you still need to be able to understand and know how to sculpt, how to create landscape materials, and how to paint textures in your landscape. And the new landscape layers enhance your workflow, but you still need the foundation, the essentials of being able to create landscapes in UE4. So if you need the proper foundation, I have a course which will teach you everything you need to get started with UE4 landscapes. It's called UE4 Fundamentals Volume 2 Landscapes Essentials and I highly recommend you take a look at it. It includes over 30 videos and over 5 hours of tutorials and it will quickly get you up to speed and give you the knowledge that's direct and straight to the point so you can start creating landscapes and painting textures on them so you can begin to incorporate them into your environments and into your own work.